Strange, weird, spooky, and absurd. These are all words used to describe the bizarre and very real world of the quantum realm. When you see it in movies, it's usually depicted as this psychedelic universe directly beneath ours, where the laws of physics that govern our reality no longer apply, making way for a world of infinite possibilities. But this isn't just some science fiction trope, and the quantum-related headlines have been everywhere for the past few years. From scientists creating a wormhole in a lab, other scientists reversing time, to the very building blocks of reality starting to change when we observe them. The more we learn about it, the more we realize how much we don't know, and it seems like everyone has a different idea of what it all means. From last year's Nobel Prize going to quantum entanglement, to Marvel's quantum realm, to the army of TikTokers who believe you can use quantum manifestation to move through parallel universes. So I decided to do some digging, researching everything I could on the real life world of the quantum, because I wanted to figure out why it is one of the most hotly debated areas of modern science. And what I've come to realize, and what you'll realize by the end of this video, is it's less about how much of this is based in reality and more about how much of it determines what reality is actually based on. And yes, it is absolutely about to get weird. In 1940, two identical twin brothers were born in Pika, Ohio. The boys were separated at birth, and only three weeks later they were adopted by two separate families, the Lewis family and the Springer family, and they wouldn't have any contact with each other for the first 39 years of their life. The first of many coincidences happened shortly after they were adopted, when both of their new families named them James, Jim for short, and while the two boys would unknowingly grow up only 40 miles apart, somehow they lived almost identical lives as if their two fates were entangled together. Both the Lewis family and the Springer family had a dog named Toy, and both families adopted their second son shortly after and named him Larry. While in school, both Jims, who now had a dog named Toy and a brother named Larry, did exceptionally well in math and woodwork, but they both really struggled with spelling. Later in life, both twins would marry a woman named Linda, but unfortunately, neither of their marriages would work out, and a few years later, both twins got divorced. Then, uh, unsurprisingly at this point, both twins remarried women named Betty, and shortly after, both Bettys gave birth to their first sons, who they both named James Allen. Jim 1 and 2 were both heavy smokers, they drove the same Chevrolet, worked in security, and they even spent their vacations at the exact same Florida beach resort, most likely just a few feet away from each other. It wasn't until 1979 when Jim Lewis was able to make contact with Jim Springer that the twin boys realized they had lived almost identical lives. When this all came out, the Jim twins took the world by storm, and it's probably one of the most relevant real-world cases in the nature versus nurture debate. Because when the twins were studied by scientists, it was revealed that their medical histories, brain waves, and personality tests were all the exact same. It was almost as if there was this invisible string connecting the two Jims for their entire life. And even though they were separated physically, something was causing them to make decisions decisions as one, which is the whole idea behind quantum entanglement, something that was proposed by Albert Einstein in the 1930s, which he literally called spooky action at a distance, but wasn't actually proven until 2022. The easiest way to understand quantum entanglement is the story of the Jim Twins, except it's happening all of the time at this subatomic level, where you can separate these two entangled particles by huge distances, and they will still behave as one. At first, scientists were confused on how these particles were able to transfer information faster than the speed of light, but what they realized is that these particles weren't communicating with each other at all. They were operating as one single unit that was separated physically, but connected on a higher plane. Or lower, I guess. <laughs> I told you it was gonna get weird. Spooky fact number two about the real life quantum world is that every outcome of any given situation exists until someone is around to observe it. So what I mean by that is if you were Ant-Man and you got stuck in the quantum realm and you flipped a coin, something really interesting would happen. In the real world, there are two possible outcomes. The coin lands on heads or the coin lands on tails. But in the quantum world, the coin is in a state called quantum superposition where it has technically landed on both heads heads and tails, and it's not going to choose one side or the other until you observe it for yourself. A popular thought experiment used to help grasp this is Schrodinger's cat, a theoretical situation where you place a cat inside of a box with a vat of poison. There's a 50% chance the cat has gotten into the poison and died, but until you open the box and look for yourself, the cat is technically both alive and dead. In the quantum realm, everything exists in possibilities, and it isn't until you check for yourself where the true fate of the cat is determined. In other words, 
The very act of observing something at the quantum level causes reality to determine the direction it's going in. Up until it's observed, all realities are technically true. This is known as the observer effect and where the it's all connected people start coming in. Max Planck, the father of quantum physics, said that the mind is the matrix of all matter. Matter is the thing that everything in our universe is made out of, and what he meant when he said that was everything exists in response to consciousness. So the mind comes first, and conscious thought gives form to matter. And it's not just us, but any living being. In 1995, a team of scientists created a robot with one specific task, move around a room completely randomly. Then they took a bunch of newborn chicks and placed them inside of the room. And the thing is with baby chickens is that they will imprint on the first moving thing that they encounter and adopt it as their mother. So the chicks imprinted on this robot and when they were removed from the room, the robot moved around randomly as normal. But when the chicks were placed back in the room, the robot's movements were no longer random and it spent over 200% more time around the chicks than anywhere else which was surprising to the scientist, but it led them to the conclusion that the baby chick's imprint had a psychokinetic influence on the robot's movements. Since then, there have been hundreds of similar studies from the CIA to Princeton to try and conclude if human thought can influence the pattern of a random number generator. And time and time again, in almost every single study, there has been clear and concise evidence that it does. Now, I wanna ask you, have you ever been listening to a Spotify playlist and thought to yourself, oh, I really hope that this specific song comes on next. And then the next song comes on and it was exactly the song that you were hoping for? Well. Maybe it wasn't a coincidence after all. Which is why, as you can probably guess, theories of quantum physics really spill over into the practice of manifestation. Because it's at the quantum level that the building blocks that create our universe form, all possibilities exist in the quantum world, and the outcome isn't determined until it's observed. Which begs the question, shouldn't all possibilities of our universe exist somewhere? Which is where the final piece of this puzzle comes in. Do you remember earlier when I said that in the quantum realm, an object can exist in all of its possible states at the exact same time, and its true state isn't determined until it's observed. Well, in 1957, Hugh Everett proposed the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics and said that if this is the way that the building blocks of our universe were behaving, it was safe to assume that this is how the universe was behaving as well. If a coin can be both in heads and tails at the same time, or a cat can be both alive and dead, the many worlds interpretation says that there is a parallel universe for both outcomes and they come together at the quantum level. Before you open your eyes, or before you open the box, you get to decide what the outcome is, and then all you have to do is observe it. This applies to everything, that every single version of your life that hasn't happened yet is true, and all you have to do is decide what the outcome is, and then observe it into existence, which is the whole idea of manifestation and the law of attraction, that there is an infinite amount of universes, including one where you have everything you could have ever wanted, and all you have to do is align yourself with it to pull it into your reality. Now, because I'm not a quantum physicist, I can't say for certain how much of this is actually true, but if we're being honest, I don't think they really can either. We know that these things are happening, but we're not really sure why they're happening, so all we can do is come up with theories to try and explain it. All we know for sure is that it is a weird, weird world down there. And if you like this video and you want to check out my one before it on asteroid mining, you can click the video next to me. Thank you.